During this video, we'll be sharing how two hunters used pinch points to get within range of two great bucks. Hunters may use one or a combination of things to get within range of deer, such as terrain, water sources, a scrape, maybe an old fence gap and a barbed wire fence, or other things that increase deer activity at a specific location. Finding and effectively hunting pinch points or bottlenecks is a great way to get deer within range and to tag more venison for the freezer. If you'd like to learn more about deer behavior and hunting strategies, make sure you subscribe to the Growing Deer channel so you're notified each time we release a new video. Today is Saturday, November 19th. Uh, this is the opening day for Wisconsin's nine day gun season. The first hunt I'd like to share is from Matt Opright, hunting in Wisconsin at the family farm during the opening weekend of firearm season. I got the truck all unloaded, um, ATVs ready to go. I'm gonna drive probably about three quarters of the way, um, get the stand and sticks, um, get everything on my back, and we'll slip into this spot here and the stand set up and see what the uh, morning brings. It was a cold, snowy morning, but Matt had positioned himself at the right location. He saw a lot of deer. had gone in early that morning and based on the terrain and past hunting observations had decided to do a hang and hunt set. You can see on hunt stands 3D map that Matt was hunting a hardwood travel corridor on a ridge top but there was a steep slope off to the east. With the southwest wind that day Matt's scent was blowing into that steep valley and that bottleneck well, that was between that ridge top and the edge of a large ag field to the west. Any deer could travel from north to south and Matt's scent was blowing back into the valley, not alerting deer. This little travel corridor was a heck of a bottleneck. Now, it was about 200 yards wide from Matt's position to the edge of the field, but that's within range of the Winchester and Matt was able to cover a lot of ground and he saw a lot of deer. If you've been keeping up with growing deer, you may say, hey, this travel corridor looks familiar because a few weeks ago, we shared a hunt where Matt Eggy was hunting the same travel corridor, but he was hunting to the west of where Matt was positioned. He was on the edge of that field. And sure enough, during that hunt, a nice buck worked the edge, jumped the fence, and started working that hardwood ridge travel corridor going into the timber. Matt was able to grunt that buck and turn him and get him within range of the prime. Due to the wind and the time of year, Matt Opright had decided to hang further to the east and his strategy was spot on. He was seeing a lot of deer. In fact, he decided to just leave his stand there and return the next morning. Today is Sunday. Um, November 20th it is the second day of Wisconsin's nine day gun season. Gonna go back into that same large bedding area um, where we did the hang and hunt. Um, I left that set there. It was another cold Wisconsin morning, but Matt warmed up quickly when he spotted a doe with a nice buck behind her.
for a while longer. Uh, got a few doe tags, and I know we can take, you know, quite a few more doe off this farm. So, so tense, um, but it's a beautiful day, and um, hopefully we can earn a couple opportunities here. So, check back in on that. Okay. Well, it's about noon. Came in, offered about a 20 yard shot. Um, and he proceeded he headed kind of southwest up over the top of this ridge down to there got mad egg here behind the camera so we're gonna go pick up the trail and hopefully find the buck you can see on this one bed right here there's a bunch of beds right over there on the edge of that point um, we got lots of trails crisscrossing through here tons of bedding down there bedding over the side here A big split, really big twos. That's nuts. Look at that, huh? That's awesome. Congratulations, Matt, on another great buck. If you haven't watched Matt's recent bow hunts, be sure to check them out at the link in the description as he tagged a big old Iowa bruiser and another Wisconsin buck with his bow earlier this fall. great day. Matt's hunt is a great example of using the terrain and habitat features to find bottlenecks and get deer within range. Growing Deer is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Also by Green Cover Food Plots, Winchester, Lacrosse Footwear, Moultrie Mobile, Fleet Outdoor Apparel, Morel Targets, RTP Outdoors, Fourth Arrow, Hunt Stand, Scorpion Venom Archery, Case IH Tractors, Ward Laboratories, Burris Optics, National Land Realty, G5 Broadheads, Prime Bows, and Redneck Hunting Blinds. Team member McKay Gones also knows the importance of bottlenecks, not only for hunting, but scouting locations where he hunts in Eastern Kansas. Last summer, there was a wicked drought where McKaja hunts, and he took his Moultrie Mobile Edge and positioned it overlooking a small water source. This water source was a limited resource, and it was the pinch point. It was the attraction bringing in a lot of bucks to that area. During droughts, water can be an attractive resource, but it can also create a bottleneck during other times of the year as deer travel along the edges. If hunters can position themselves in a way to catch deer traveling along maybe the edge of a pond or a creek, they can often get within range of deer. That's the strategy McKaja used during early November when he and his wife Abby headed to the woods and sat down right next to a creek on the edge of a field. Maps are great ways to see pinch points. And when you look at the map of where McKaja had positioned himself right next to the creek, well, there was a heck of a bottleneck. In fact, there was a small drainage that kind of paralleled the creek and it created a very narrow strip between that drainage and the edge of the field and the creek where deer could travel within bow range. With a northwest wind, McKaja's scent was only blowing a few yards to the creek and then thermals were taking over and carrying that scent to the south. It wasn't going to alert any deer that was traveling through this narrow bottleneck.
At dark, McCage took up the trail, but he didn't have to go far. That buck had only crossed the field and expired in the timber on the other side. He did. Right. right where I thought he would be down. Ooh. Nice big, heavy. Eight. It's a beautiful old mature buck. I like how heavy he is. Pretty tall brow tines. So, yeah, we'll get to uh, get him checked in and drag him out of here and get some fresh venison. Congratulations, Makaja, taking a nice buck from the ground. Both Makaja and Matt have done a great job identifying and using pinch points. It's resulted and a lot of fresh venison and nice antlers. Pinch points or bottlenecks can vary from property to property, so you need to get out there and do some scouting and really study how deer are using your area and then find those pinch points that are narrowing deer travel down to an area that's within your effective range. Move in and enjoy some great hunts. I hope you're able to get outside this week, maybe do some scouting and hunting. But more importantly, whatever you're doing, slow down, enjoy creation, and listen to what the Creator is saying to you and the purpose He has for your life. Thanks for watching Growing Deer.